Hey, welcome to Merge. Oh. Hey, I, thank you for making a noise out there because with the way the lights are, I can't really see if anybody's out there at all. So, But I, I'm Patrick Gallagher, and I'm one of the few leaders that didn't go to Reverb. Did anybody go to Reverb? Would you do it again? Yes. Uh, okay, excellent. <laughs> you know, one of the things I'm, I'm really excited about, especially with Reverb, you know, we were planning for just, you know, maybe, maybe 20, we were hoping, you know, of, of the students. And like two weeks before, we only had like maybe five people signed up. But we had 46 people signed up and 44 attending, which is amazing. And if you don't realize it, you know, God's spirit is moving, not only here, but in this whole valley. You know, one of the things I like about events like this is that, you know, there was like 1,500 uh, Christians signed up for this, and you got to see them and see that you're not part of something small, like, you know, you may think looking around here. You're part of an amazing movement that God is doing. And I don't know if you've noticed or not, but we as leaders really notice that God's spirit is moving in your lives, in the lives of many people throughout this church, throughout this valley. You know, that, this is just something that's totally, I mean, if you just open your eyes and see what God has for you and, and is doing in other people's lives, it is amazing and powerful. We just have to be available for this. Okay. We're going to continue our talk on <sighs> stress. You know, stress, stress stresses me out. Like just talking about stress, I'm stressed. Okay, but if you remember what we discussed last week, the one thought we put out is when we carry a lot, we have to remember that God cares a lot. Just like it says on this board over here, it says, He cares for you. Okay? Now, I, I, I hope that throughout this week, you have taken this to heart, knowing that God cares for you and that uh, you have allowed uh, God to share in, the, in carrying the burdens and the, sh and, and the stress that you've been doing this week. I hope that you started each day coming to God and, and, uh, and, and let him know uh, what is in your life, what's going on in your life, and how you need his help. I really hope that that's been something there. Um, you know, has, has anybody heard of the word discipleship before? Okay, a, a couple of you, um, especially those who were here from last service because we, we talked about it a little bit then. You know, coming to God immediately with prayer, you know, like right from the beginning, you know, not waiting for things to, to totally fall apart in my life, you know, like when I'm sitting there thinking, I don't know what to do, you know, God help me. Uh, but, but at the very beginning when things come in my life and start saying, you know, God, I just want you, I have things that are going to come into my life today. Give me your strength. Give me your word. Uh, give me what I need to equip my day this day. You know, coming to God daily with prayer and, and trying to lay the things on uh, that's in your life and give and turn them over to him, that's really the first, one of the first steps in discipleship. And what discipleship really means is that I choose, I personally choose to follow, to become a student of, and live as Jesus Christ. So if I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ, that is who I'm going to be. He, it's someone who I want to follow. Now, I, how do I follow him? I can read his word and understand what his life is, is all about. And I want to be a student. I have to study and get his word in my heart and make him a part of who I am so that I can live as he lived. You know, so really we're starting on that journey of becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ if we come to him in prayer and relieve our stress with him. You know, one of the things I always liked uh, that's kind of going around on Facebook and different things is that um, there's a statement that says that prayer is not my backup plan. It's my battle plan. And the key thing is, backup plan is when you go, ah, I have nothing else. I tried everything else, and oh, God, I guess I have to pray to you. That's a backup plan. 
but when it's your battle plan, is I'm going to be offensive against the enemy, against the things that are holding me back, against the things that this world is throwing at me. I am going to use prayer as my offensive weapon to live my life for Jesus Christ. You know, we're going to continue talking about techniques of managing and handling stress, and that's what we're going to do this week. Now, I want to let you know the number one thing that stresses me out is public speaking. I don't, I don't, is any, anybody here, uh, you can stress about public speaking? Okay, yeah, pretty much everybody. Now, now you may be saying, well, that's kind of, isn't that kind of what you're doing now? You know, what, why would you want to put yourself in this stressful situation? Well, it, for me, I look at this, what I'm doing here now is more of life sharing more than just public speaking. But I want to talk to you about an incident that happened to me several years ago. I, I, I flew to California for business, and we went to a conference, and there was people from all over the world, from Japan, from China, from Australia, from Europe, from South America, everywhere. And they were all there, and they were all like the experts in their field, and they were coming, talking about, and looking at different uh, aspects of products to help them do their job. Because they were, we were all engineers, and we were building electronic components. Some of them for automobiles, some of them for computers, some of them for rocket ships and satellites, and some of them for, you know, whatever, toothbrushes, who knows. The, uh, uh, so, but everything that has electronics, they were building it, and so they, they were going there. And I thought it was going to be pretty cool, because I was just going to sit in the audience and, and chill out and shake people's hands and meet people from all over the world. You know, it's kind of a, a fun thing to do for me, you know, because, you know, you're in the background, stuff like that. Well, what I found out 30 minutes before our company's presentation was going on is that the guy who was going to get the presentation, he didn't make it. You know, so we're sitting there, we're looking around, what's, what's going to happen? So my boss says, you give the presentation. M -m 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 me? You know, I, I didn't even know what the presentation was about. You know, so I sat there, and he says, well, I'll email it to you. So I'm sitting there like this, and I'm reading through these slides and trying to figure out what's going on and what they're talking about. And we're standing, I'm sitting on the edge of the stage there, and, you know, my heart's beating so hard that I, I thought people could see it in my chest, just, you, know, you know, like in cartoons, the type of thing like that. And my breath started getting really, really short, and I, I started getting dizzy because I wasn't really breathing enough like that. And my stomach was getting, like, turning in knots, and I'm sitting there thinking, this is not going to be good. And they just says, and I want to introduce Patrick Gallagher. And I had to step on my, out on the stage. So I decided I was going to take a couple deep breaths. Okay, who's here breathing with me? Okay, one more. One more. And I stepped out on stage, and I just kind of scanned through the crowd just to see who were there. There were 300 people out there. That's a lot of people, especially when you don't know what you're talking about. And I looked out there, and I noticed over in this corner, well, that's, that's Joyce. I know her. You know, I talk to her all the time on the phone. And uh, over there is that, that Sandeep. I'm going to, I know him. I talk to him all the time. You know, Maddox is over there. Actually, Maddox is right there. But there's different people in the audience that I knew and I talked to on a daily basis. So what I decided is to slow things down and really just talk to the people in the audience that I knew, my friends, the ones I've already done on a day-to-day -day basis. So we went through the presentation and I talked over here to this person and I changed the conversation over to here and then over here and by the time the presentation was complete, in my mind, it was just a small talk to a couple of my friends. But really, from their point of view, they thought I was addressing everyone in the whole audience. You know, when we're in stressful situations, it's helpful to have friends with us, isn't it? To identify who's going to be with me in this, uh, this stressful situation. Now, I would like to show this in a demonstration a little bit of how people can help you. I need three volunteers. Okay. 
<laughs> I'm going to, uh, Talia, I, I'll bring you up. Bennett. And uh, I can't see your name. Come on up. Okay, I need you. Uh, Talia, I'm going to stand, stand over there. Natalia, you're the oldest, right? I would think so. Okay, could you pick up one of those boards? This one. Okay, Talia. Um, could you pick up the two boards? And could you pick up the two books? No, I'm, I just want you to hold them right now. Now, only Talia, hold it out with your arm straight out. Okay, I'm going to let her sit there and, and fester for a little bit. And as we go, you guys, you guys, you guys uh, are doing, uh, you're doing fine. I'll come to you in a minute. Okay, the, uh, one of the things I like, uh, there's, a, there's a statement that always talks about a blessing or a joy shared is multiplied. Now, what I mean by that is, you know, like, for example, if I say something like, you know, we're having a baby, you know, and I share that, I'm, I'm excited, right? And when you feel it, do you feel excited too? You feel excited for me, don't you? So it, it's kind of a multiplication, or I got an A on the test, or, you know, our team won. You know, whatever, whatever it is, whatever I'm excited about, I come to you and I share this with the excitement. Talia, thank you very much. Is it getting heavy? It is, okay. It, is that, that you're doing a great job. This is it. Okay, could you hold those two out there with one hand? Okay, go ahead. Okay, we're getting this going. Okay, and the... Uh, so, so what ends up happening is that, you know, when I share things that are, I'm happy about and I tell other people about it, it becomes extremely exciting and it multiplies. So I not only hold this joy, you hold that joy. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay, good. Bennett, can you hold yours out? Bennett, is that heavy? Do you want me to help you? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, so look at, are you guys... Hi, hi, how you doing over there, Cameron? Are you having a rough time over there? Is it getting super heavy? Tell you how you doing. Yours is probably the lightest, but it's, it feels heavy when you hold it for a while, doesn't it? Okay, you guys can sit down, put them down over there. Okay, thank you very much. What we're trying to show, yeah, thank, give them a hand, give them a hand. Good job, guys. You Take a bow, take a bow. <laughs> okay, thank you, guys. You know, one of the things I'm trying to demonstrate there is, is that even with joys, when we, just like when we're sharing joys, it multiplies. When I share a burden or, or a trouble aspect of my life, when I share that, you know, something sad in, in me, if I share it, with, share it, it's divided down. Joys shared are multiplied. Burdens or sadness or even stress shared is divided. You know, even if it was like with Talia, even if she has a light, light load and she's holding it for a long time, the longer she holds it, that becomes heavy. So we, we have a tendency thinking, I'm not strong enough to hold this any longer, you know? Or even if it's a medium time and you're holding a little heavier weight, or if you have a heavy weight, it's, it gets, it's, it's heavy right from the beginning. You struggle with it. It doesn't matter what we have and how long, but it also, you know, how heavy the load is. It, what it does matter is how long we're carrying it for, too. We shouldn't wait to the end until it falls and collapses and falls on the floor to ask for help when things come in our lives. See, we sometimes, and the world says, oh, you're weak. And we feel bad about that, saying, oh, I should be strong enough to do this. That is not how God designed you. He has never designed you to carry anything by yourself. Right from the beginning. Like when Cameron, was it Cameron? No, no, it wasn't Cameron. It was Bennett. Bennett had the heavy books, right? Bennett, Bennett had the heavy books. When Right from the beginning, I asked him if he needed help, and he said, yes. Okay. And I was able to help him, and he was able to hold it because we were doing it together. He wasn't relying on his own strength. But with Talia's, even in the beginning, hers was light. She was carrying it for a longer and longer time. It came so heavy that her arm was starting to go down. That's the same with our stresses in our lives. That's exactly what happens to us as we go through life. God has designed us, just like we talked about last week, to come to him in prayer right from the beginning, 
right before things, as soon as something's addressed, as soon as it's given to you, that task is given to you, start praying about, God, how is this involved in my life? Because when I do this, it starts to divide it down. If I have friends or someone I can trust around me, it also helps me out quite a bit because if I could share with them, and, and, and even if they're just listening to me, you know, if I'm going through a difficult time and I, and I go to Annie, I go, Annie, I need to talk. And she says, I'm here to listen. And I share with her what's, what's on my heart. Or I go to Riley and say things to him and say, Riley, things, I just need someone to listen to me, you know. It makes my heart lighter knowing that people care and are willing to listen to me. Right from the beginning. So my burden and my stress is divided. So that's why I always like the statement, joys shared multiply, burdens shared divide. If I want to li- divide my load down so it's, not, so it's more manageable to, to deal with, I need to share it. First to God, then with others. You know... We really think about other people when it, when it comes to our stress. You know, it's, it's, it's really, and the reason why is because the enemy wants us to feel alone, be isolated. The main reason he wants that, and that's what we see in the world. You know, you need to be a self-made man, or, or you should be able to do this. You need to be stronger. You know, we hear that all the time, but the thing is, that is not how God designed us. He designed us to be a partner with him in all things that he's calling us to be, right from the beginning. Partner with him. That's why he gave us the church to surround us. Anything else is a lie. We, we were made to fit in the, design, in the design that God has made us. We have to trust his plan. Or we're being lied to by the world, by the enemy who wants to destroy us. You know, one of the things that... Uh, we also do to ourselves is we lie to ourselves. You know, a lot of people say to you, how are you doing today? Doing great. When things are all falling apart on the inside. I'm deceiving myself. I need to be honest with myself. How would it be different if, you, if somebody says, how are you doing? You just sit there thinking, I need prayer. I need help. If I said that to my friends, as someone who's trusted, what are they going to do? They're going to, going to put their arms around you, and they're going to pray for you. They're going to help you. They're going to listen to you. What could I do? I don't know what you could do, but it doesn't matter what I can do, whatever is needed for to help you through this. I am with you. That's what God says. That's what the church is all about. We need to just be open up and say these things. You know, in some ways, in 2 Corinthians in uh, chapter 12, verse 10, it says, That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness and in insults and in hardships and persecution and difficulties. For when I am weak, I am strong. And what he's really saying there is saying, Hey, when, when stress and everything comes upon me, that's when I have to rely most on God because I do not have the strength to carry on. And I see God working in my life. If I want to see God work in my life more and more each and every day, then I step out in my faith. I trust him. I rely. The stress that I have is the stress I give over to him. And then together we partner on the task that needs to be done. We cannot say or hide or try to act like nothing's wrong when things are wrong. That's not helpful. That's not good at all. We need to be honest with ourselves. We need to be honest with each other and be able to share with God first, relying on him through prayer, and then trusting others. And really, that's what God gave us the church all about. You know, have you ever walked around upstairs and saw people praying for each other, uh, people talking? You know, sometimes you even see people crying in each other's arms. And, 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 uh, and, and people just getting involved. The whole reason that is is because we are the church. We are the body of Christ. We're here to love each other and care for each other. 
You know, one of the whole, the whole reason I'm here as a leader is because someone invested in me when I was a teen. They believed in me and encouraged me to live my life for Christ. And that made the world a difference in me. I had someone I could go to and talk to when I was going through difficult times. I had someone who pointed out the scriptures to me, talked about the love of God, how his goodness is part of who I am. And that's what I and the other leaders here want to do for you as well. You know, Jesus, you know, when he had major concerns in his life, he had to rely on his friends too. And he actually followed the same formula. You know, at one of the most stressful times of Jesus' life, when things were totally maxed out in him, he talked about, in the, in the, actually he's talked about several, in, in multiple Gospels, he goes, he talk, actually throughout the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, he talks about how he's always going to God, his Father, in prayer. But in John specifically, there was a point where his stresses was maxed out. It was a place really at the end of, of the Gospel, you know, you got to remember what was Jesus was going through. He was arrested, okay, he was tried and found guilty when he really has done nothing wrong at all. He was beaten, he was tortured, he was nailed to the cross, nailed, like nails, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I can't imagine the pain that would have been. You know, he actually had to, he had a nail through both of his feet. He actually had to push up on that nail driven through his feet just so he could take a breath. And when he was hanging down, he couldn't breathe because his lungs were too compressed. And then he pushed up again to breathe again. Now, I hope that's a level of stress that you guys will never have to imagine. But it says in, in, in John, in the 19th chapter, it says, Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, which is John, because John, that's what he identified himself as, the disciple Jesus loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from then on, the disciple took her into his home. Now, the thing is, is you got to remember that the night before when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he already prayed to the Father to care and take care of his disciples, his followers that, that were coming with him. He gave them to him. And then, and then, so he turned them over to them. He prayed for all the suffering that he had to go through, that he might have the strength and that God would be with him through this whole act. And as he was laying on the cross and all our sins were plowed upon him, and he's sitting there, he looked down and saw his mom. He had to rely on his friend to take care of his mom. He couldn't do it. He was leaving this earth. So he goes to him and says, this is your son. This is your mother. And his friend took him and took care of that situation. So Jesus' stress was relieved for that moment, for that item. Jesus leaned on his friend. You know, God uses other people to help us when we're stressed. That's just what happens. Just like in the in the in the demonstration there, when help was all asked for, it was given, and you were able to carry the load even longer. If you try to do it yourself, eventually there's going to be a point where it collapses and breaks. We don't want to be lying to ourselves ever when we say, I can handle this, I can handle this. If you look around the church on Sunday, what ends up happening is you'll see people praying for each other, hugging each other, loving each other, because that's what we need. That's what the church is all about. We're not here to tear people down. We're not here to make fun of people. We're not here to do anything. We're here to encourage one another in our walk for Christ. That's the whole, whole reason God created the church. We pull things together. This is part of God's plan. Now, I don't want you to listen to the enemy. 
and say, stand alone. And, and the other thing is, is we don't want to lie to ourselves. You know, a lot of times we can deceive ourselves. I'm okay. Everything's okay. When things aren't, we have to be honest with ourselves and come to fronts. That's what the church is here for. That's why we're here for. Okay. Sometimes you may, you may say to yourself, well, how can I go to my friends? They're the, they're the problem. They're the source of my stress. I mean, don't you, do you not know people? They stress me out. You know, we can get to that particular point. That is also a deception to us. We can't, it says in, 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 in Proverbs, it says, fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. You know, we, we need ahead of, ahead of time to find people who are safe for us. Not those who add stress, but people who are safe for us where we can go and talk to them and know that we have an open dialogue. You know, just like, just like I want to start my day with, with prayer and, 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 and live my life out like this and be ready for it before the crisis happens, I want to already know and have already started a dialogue with key people in my life so that I can share and divide down my burdens and my stress, even when they're small, so that when something huge comes along, it's already in place. You know, we need to trust God. We also need to slowly open up and trust other people. You know, start by turning to other people for help even now before the crisis has come upon us. You know, even when, on a day-to-day -day basis, I used to go to my father all the time when he was alive, and I used to talk to him about what was going on at work so I could reduce, reduce my stress. So that by the time I got home and be with my wife and kids, my stress was already diminished. You know, even now I have friends like my brother-in-law and my, and my wife I talk to on a daily basis about things that are going on in our lives so that we can share and carry these things together. That's what makes us family. When things get really tough, sometimes I call Pastor John or Pastor Joe. You know, these are people I go to. I need to do that now. I need to have those door, doors open before a major crisis has come in my life. If I use them all the time, you know, that's small group leaders. I want to I make this one thing very clear to you. If you have no one in your life today, you have us. You have Katie. You have Hannah. You have Austin, myself. Josh, did I, did I get it right this time? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, yeah. I, I caught her. I, I pronounced her name wrong last time. But the, uh, and, uh, you know, you have Carissa. You have all of us that are here, a April, I mean, uh, Amber. And uh, so I messed up somebody else's name this time. So they, but, the, but, the, but the thing is, we are here. The whole reason we are here is because we love you. God loves you. We love you. We want what's best for you. You know, we're actually commanded in, in Galatians 6.2. It says, carry each other's burden. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. You know, so we're commanded to share our burdens. And we're commanded to help others carry it. That's why he says, you know, Christ always says, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love others as yourself. I love you, so I'm willing to help you when you need it. I'm always here for you. Remember that God uses other people to help us when we're stressed. It just... That's simple. The thing is, is that we just need to look for people that in the church help significantly because that's what the church is all about. But also you may need, I mean, depending on what's going on in life, there, there's, there's, you know, friends, there's family, mom and dad, there's small group leaders, there's pastors, there's also counselors at school and different people that, 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 that depending on what's going on in your life, Depending on what your family situation is, depending on family, what situation you're going through yourself, there's always some place. But I want you to know that we're always here for you. God loves you. He has goodness for you. And he wants what's, what's, what's best for you. He has given us a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And he has surrounded us with the church and friends that love him 
and will also support you when things get difficult. Let's pray. Father of heaven, I want to thank you for all that you've given us. I want to thank you for the relationship that we have and the openness that we have. I pray for each one that's here, Lord Jesus, that you will speak uh, to them, that you will prepare them, Lord Jesus, before things even uh, get rougher in their life if it happens. May you walk by their side daily. May they feel your spirit and presence all the In Jesus' precious name, amen. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you really liked it, hit subscribe below. And if you wanna check out some other videos that we have on our channel, click right over here. And if this video up here is one that's specifically picked out for you. Thank you again for watching.